Before the MCU became a case study in diminishing returns, it was a juggernaut that ruled the box office for a decade. A shaky beginning from a mediocre Hulk movie turned solid when Tony Stark crashed onto the stage, kicking off the most legendary universe known to cinema. The Iron Man sequels were unable to uphold the movie magic of the first, but held up strong at the box office. Thor swaggered onto the stage, kicking off his own franchise that fell short of Iron Man, but his top cinema compared to the garbage that the MCU puts out today. Spider-Man was by far the strongest franchise financially, ripping massive profits, mostly for Sony, on the back of the most popular Marvel superhero. For many, the first Iron Man is the best MCU movie for revitalizing the comic book superhero through a charismatic leading man in Robert Downey Jr. Some argue that the cosmic expansion in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie was remarkable, while most assert that the culmination of a 10-year build-up in Avengers Infinity War is unmatched. Captain America The Winter Soldier also gets notice for being a successful tonal departure from the MCU formula that merged conspiracy action thriller with superheroes. While hardly the strongest at the box office, the Captain America franchise was arguably the most intriguing on a deeper level. It featured three entries that not only entertained but also asked deeper questions about political institutions, individuality, and how superheroes fit into this picture. Captain America Civil War in particular stood out in its exploration of these themes, pitting the MCU's best heroes against each other and introducing Spider-Man and the Black Panther. Civil War explored deep ideological and personal conflict in an action-packed thriller with real consequences for these iconic heroes. This lightning in a bottle is a great place to start exploring what made the MCU great and conduct an autopsy on this corpse of a once great cinematic universe. The plot of Captain America Civil War goes something like this. Following the events of Avengers Ultron, the destruction of Sokovia, a fictional country, leaves the world reeling and asking questions about the impact of superheroes. Tony Stark is at the heart of this controversy since Ultron was his own creation gone rogue. This tension worsens when Wanda unintentionally kills diplomats while trying to stop a band of Hydra agents. Governments around the world decide that it's time to control superheroes using the Sokovia Accords, a treaty that would give international bureaucrats the political power to control superheroes. Half of the Avengers led by Tony Stark see the Accords as much needed order, while the other half led by Steve Rogers see them as a dangerous loss of self-determination to corruptible bureaucrats. Meanwhile, Baron Zemo, a disgruntled Sokovian, capitalizes on this discord to destroy the Avengers in order to avenge his own deceased family. He orchestrates the explosion of a meeting of diplomats and frames the Winter Soldier, killing T'Challa's father in the process and dragging the Black Panther into the hunt for Bucky. Steve and Bucky uncover a conspiracy by Zemo to reactivate Super Soldiers as a mercenary force. Tony Stark leads the hunt for Bucky in compliance with the Sokovia Accords while Steve Rogers intervenes to protect a longtime friend that he believes to be innocent. This clash climaxes in an epic battle between superheroes determined to subdue each other without fatalities. The battle ends when Steve and Bucky escape and Rhodey is paralyzed from the waist down by friendly fire and the dissidents under Steve are captured. They are able to make it out because the Black Widow betrays Tony Stark to allow them to investigate Zemo's conspiracy further. Tony Stark catches onto their trail eventually and the Black Panther follows the party to a facility of super soldiers in stasis. Baron Zemo reveals his true plan to lead the heroes here into a deathmatch by revealing the assassination of Tony Stark's parents by Bucky. This sets off a fierce fight to the death as Tony Stark is consumed by vengeance against Bucky while Steve Rogers is determined to defend his friend. Zemo's attempt to yet himself after this failed conspiracy is thwarted by T'Challa who transcends his own pursuit of vengeance. T'Challa takes Bucky under his wing in Wakanda and Steve Rogers proceeds to break his captured teammates out of prison. Rewatching Civil War left a pit of cinematic despair in my heart. 
Everything about this movie hearkened to a time when the MCU told interesting stories about fascinating characters living in a world with stakes behind every decision. On a societal level, Ultron and the destruction of Sokovia are indeed the products of a genius whose innovations exceed his foresight. Wanda's killing of innocent civilians corroborates the potential for superheroes to destroy because of abilities that exceed their control. The Sokovia Accords are a rational solution to this problem as a board of trustees would diversify decision making and take superheroes' responsibility and autonomy. Where else have we seen governments try to expand control over their citizens in exchange for peace and protection? If history is anything to go by, institutions will always seek to accrue more power for experts and autocrats that promise safety in their superior wisdom. Steve Rogers' dissent is also a rational response to excessive authority, which is susceptible to greed and subversion. In the real world, it's not uncommon for governments and institutions to be subverted by corporations and social movements with ulterior motives. Granting these institutions totalitarian influence only ensures that special interests and infiltrators will wield excessive power over everyone. Ironically, Disney itself is a case study in subversion as a studio that was built on making money by entertaining fans has transformed into an engine for social messaging that's losing momentum with each subsequent product. Disney may learn the hard way that dipping into political battles, antagonizing fans and bigoteering is a recipe for diminishing returns. Civil War presents a compelling case for both sides of an ideological battle between unfettered autonomy and totalitarian safetyism. It posits that freedom of powerful individuals is dangerous, but authoritarian control is hardly a solution as it simply creates a ruling class with even more insidious political power. Gee, imagine exploring the best arguments for both sides of a heated, complex political issue. Ultimately, the movie doesn't shove the writer's preferred prescription into the viewer's face. It lets audiences enjoy their favorite superheroes contemplating complex conundrums. The broader sociopolitical implications of Civil War are elevated by well-crafted characters. Tony Stark's fear of Thanos is what inspires him to create Ultron to defend Earth in the first place. Then his guilt for Ultron's destruction and fear of failing again consumes him. The Sokovia Accords confer an opportunity to shift responsibility in the future and prevent other superheroes from wreaking unintended havoc. His guilt grows into frustration with Steve Rogers, then into anger after his friend Roddy is paralyzed, and ultimately into rage after discovering that Bucky killed his parents. Stark's predilections fall right into Baron Zemo's attempt to dismantle the Avengers. On the other hand, Steve Rogers is loyal to his allies, conscientious and independent. His attitude fits into his vast experience living through political subversions, revolutions and espionage, including the infiltration of S.H.I.E.L.D. by Hydra. While his personality doesn't evolve much, he presents a perfect foil for Tony Stark. His deep skepticism towards authority and unwavering commitment to his allies enables him to unveil the truth about Stark's parents and Zemo's plan. Incidentally, Steve Rogers' pursuit for the truth also gives closure to T'Challa, whose journey of vengeance concludes with mercy for his father's killer. To me, this is no doubt the best depiction of the Black Panther to date. Chadwick Boseman brings to life an intelligent family man and the relentless force of vengeance. T'Challa is formidable and has a level of personal agency that's lacking in his own movie, in which he mostly reacted to a plot driven by surrounding characters. His practical stance and suit also outdo the Black Panther movie's CGI fest that fell apart in the final act. Zemo presents a remarkable villain whose immaculate scheming makes up for his lack of physical prowess. Dame, even Bucky is in the best form he'd ever be in the MCU. Captain America Civil War is the product of a time when the MCU crafted complex stories and characters while striving to entertain everyone. 
This is a stark contrast to later phases where many characters have become bumbling idiots, joke machines, and flawless Mary Sue's and Gary Stu's, too preoccupied with moral posturing and taking every opportunity to insult legacy characters and chastise their fans. Disney is intent on pumping content and riding every trendy manufactured social revolution in spite of the damage that it does to their brand and box office, somehow learning little from the occasional success they've had after Avengers Endgame. For now, the best we can do is look back on the best of the MCU with profundity and appreciate the great legacy of superhero stories that got away. That's all for this video. What is your favorite MCU movie? What do you think about the trajectory of the MCU? Let me know what you think down below. Thanks to all the relentless subscribers and everyone that engages in the comments down below. Stay tuned and stay cool.